sons and daughters of light, I pierce the veil that you might see and know that celestial realm where you shall enter in not too many decades to come. Understand the realization of why, why you have descended into these lower planes. Desire is the key. Desiring then the human consciousness and the things of the flesh, lo, you have descended further and further into the astral plane until one day, looking around you, you have said to yourself, this is not my home, this is not my true environment. What am I doing in the astral plane? And at that moment, you will jump on a treadmill and hope that there be some archangel or ascended master whom you have served that will bring you out of the morass of that human consciousness. Now then, enter the etheric octave. And if you do not dwell in that octave, beloved, then I counsel you to change your thinking, change your emotions, change the manipulations of your own mind concerning this or that or the next thing that may bring you material wealth. The wealth of cosmos is within you and nowhere else. The wealth, beloved, is the fire of the heart, the balance of the threefold flame. Let this heart that is in Jesus also burn within you. And when you feel that burning, then know that the hour is come and the time is nigh when you will be able to enter the etheric octave and sustain your presence there and little by little go up by degrees until perhaps you may reach the second level or the third level. What is required of rising up the ladder of these levels, beloved, is for you to forsake that which is or was of the astral plane that has kept you there for a long, long time. Are you willing, therefore, to set aside those things that are detrimental, detrimental to your pursuit of the path? I say to you then, there are things that you can no longer do, things you may have enjoyed. You must find your enjoyment in the joy of the sacred fire of the heart, knowing that as you serve that fire and tend it and kindle it and rekindle it each day, there is an intensification that comes and then provides another circle of fire and then another and another. You, you cannot maintain and sustain these levels if you go out from this court, out from it, beloved, and go back to the ways of the world as though you could live two lives, one the way your neighbors live, very nice people, very lovely people, but not necessarily on that runway, as the messenger calls it, not necessarily in that mode of taking off and then soaring to the heart of the great central sun. You must choose, beloved, for this is a new year and a new day. There is still, yet still, great darkness in the earth. There is a high percentage yet of discarnates of those who have passed through the change called death and others that have gone through the second death. You have made your calls on this subject, yet the earth is not purged of these levels of consciousness that have been embodied by those who are the death and the dying, those who have no longer any part with God. So you must pray for those who are making a transition and who may go on in the octaves of light to balance their karma. So you must call for the judgment of fallen ones who have no desire to atone for their sins and therefore are anxious to go through the second death, for they no longer 
want to have any sense of awareness, only oblivion. You will see, beloved, as you work very, very hard on clearing this year and these cycles, how much lighter the earth can be for your service. The messenger will bring to your attention what you can do to accelerate, what you can do to bring about truly a turning around of yourself until one day, in a very few days, weeks or months, you may look at yourself in the mirror and say, I have been transformed already by Vevasvata Manu, by Lord Maitreya, and by the alchemy of Saint Germain, and I will continue my pursuit, for I realize that I truly have not put into my life the intensity necessary to throw off that human consciousness, to shatter that which should never have been, and to enter in to a place of the Holy of Holies, wherein you may give to all life the patterns of your heart, the white fire currents that flow through you, and at the same time, beloved, know the joys of family, of children, of entering into community projects, of helping those of all levels who are of good mindfulness, who are servants of God. You see the thoughts come through and they say, life will no longer be happy, life will be somber, None of the old things I used to do will I now be able to do. This is nonsense, beloved, sheer nonsense. For the joy of God and the joy of that feeling, of that flame of Jesus or Maitreya in your heart, must be the ultimate Christmas gift to suddenly feel, feel the warmth of that threefold flame, Feel the energy, feel the pulsation, knowing and knowing again, beloved, that you are rising tier upon tier into higher dimensions of being. Already many of you have set aside much of the human consciousness. Now I say, try on putting on all of the light of God and walking in the path of the adepts. There is joy in this. There is excitement, there is creativity, there is the sense, oh my God, I can make my ascension and this is sheer joy. I can do this. I will not go back to that finite mentality, that thimble cup consciousness. I see the glory of my destiny and I am willing to work for it to work for that union with my God, with my Holy Christ self. Look at the world, look at the world, what I can give the world. Surely this is a greater joy than I could know anywhere. Think of it, beloved, as you intensify this heart chakra, as you balance all of your chakras, as you send love to those who need it. Do you realize, beloved, that in a very short order, based on your rituals of decrees and service and love and giving the teachings, that you can be reaching millions through your own individual personal prayers that you offer in this court or you offer at the altar of the study group, the teaching center, where you are at this moment? Blessed ones, we must strike out with a great X that sense of consciousness, that reaching for God and entering the heaven world will deprive you of those things of the world that you are accustomed to having. That formula which I have just stated, beloved, will keep you on earth, perhaps as long as the laggards are here themselves. So then, I am Vevasvata Manu. I have been around for more than a million years. I have seen many souls and many evolutions. There are many stars that have been launched because they have accepted the path, the journey, and the disciplines that I give. 
There are many who are ascended now, who have followed Lord Maitreya, who remained in his mystery school, who did not respond to the temptations of the serpent in the garden. These ones, beloved, have long ago gone to the heart of the great central sun. Now then, think, think in your heart. What one element of your being would you like to see changed in this day and for the rest of your life? For I am here to give you a prize. You may choose that prize in your heart. You may say, Vevas Fatamanu, you are here. I choose and I ask you to deliver me of my human pride and of my criticism, condemnation, judgment, and gossip. If that is what you wish for your prize, beloved, then I shall give you that momentum of my being to assist you in removing this entire momentum of the human consciousness. Now I give you some time to consider what is the stumbling block in your life, in your four lower bodies, in your attitude, in the way you think or assess people? Think of all this, beloved. We will have a musical meditation as you are considering what favor you will ask of me. And thus I will act upon it. And you may sustain it until you find yourself one day levels above where you were in this very moment. Now, beloved, I receive from you, via your very special angel, that writing that you have made in the etheric octave of that which you would be liberated of, something you have never been able to quite shake or overcome. My angels receive these now I bear witness unto you that you shall know change and alchemy as a result of this my gift. Now, beloved, the messenger will take up the subject with you in very short order concerning what each one must do to come up higher to meet the rising tide of darkness in the earth. When the tide of human creation rises, so 
Those who are the light bearers, those who know the path and the teaching, they rise higher, they rise to the occasion, and they take dominion over that momentum of the dark waters of the deep. We then will establish and outline for you what are the requirements if you are to move forward and accelerate just as you are accelerating in the business aspects of this community. You then will come to understand that those who would save a planet and those who would save their souls by balancing karma, they then must offer a greater report, a greater calling, a greater energy, for the times require it. Even as you consider that life move, moves on and life accelerates, so the requirements of that life, the quality of that life, also demands higher levels of resolution, higher levels, yes, of sacrifice, surrender, service. Yes, beloved. Those momentums you must know. One cannot make one's ascension and still stand still. One cannot make one's ascension if the tide rises and the Black Sea is upon you and you simply stand there until you drowned. Well, beloved, that is what some have done. Somehow there is that sense that the path is too hard. I tell you, on behalf of the Ascended Masters of the Darjeeling Council of the Great White Brotherhood, that the path is not too hard, it is too easy. Think of that, beloved. Think of that. And do not dote any longer in the sense, this is too hard, that is too hard, woe is me. Those who carry on with that sense, Beloved, you may find yourself somewhere else on another planet where you must learn what hard is, what hard really means, what the struggle really is. As we have already mentioned, when the Ascended Masters may not be there or when they will be there, be as, that as it may. Get in gear, beloved. Get in gear and understand that this portion of your life, which began so many eons ago and is coming to its fiery conclusion, this portion of your life must be the greatest acceleration that you have ever put forth in all past lives. This is the meaning of the ascension. And if you ask the messenger, she will tell you the same thing again and again. So, beloved, in this hour, truly of world turmoil and chaos and death everywhere, and a sense of vacuum, of nothingness, and so forth, we the adepts, we the Manus, come to the fore. As you receive from us levels of instruction, you will understand what acceleration means and what I shall give you concerning it. Now then, let us look at the challenge at hand. The balancing of leftover karma, the binding of those who go through the, th the second death, the entering into the new year with a rolling momentum of violet flame and hopefully that momentum mitigating what could be a very grave darkness in the earth. There is also joy on the horizon and there is the sun of Helios and Vesta. There is opportunity beyond words for you to transcend your present abilities as pertains to the world of business, of education, and all that you can give to help others rise. I 
I am in the process of establishing a shaft, a tube of light around you that is very strong and that will strengthen your tube of light. Some of you have received fragments of your soul. They are returned to you and you sense that there is more substance and essence of yourself than there was before the most recent soul retrieval exercise. This is good, beloved. Now then, remember the five Dhyani Buddhas. Follow their rays to the heart. And as the love magnet of the heart magnetizes as the fire enfolding itself within you, so receive the precious rays of the five Dhyani Buddhas. These rays are ultimately powerful, and when you shall have risen to greater dimensions of perfect harmony, you shall be able to throw those rays as a thunderbolt to shatter human consciousness, part the way for the sons and daughters of God to enter. Now the Archangel Gabriel cometh with hope and their legions surround you. Look above, beloved, through the roof and into the sky. See the clouds parting. See the numberless numbers of your very own brothers and sisters who are in the higher octaves. I show you not the heaven of the blue sky, but the heaven of the etheric plane. To those realms aspire. And if you think you are not ready to accelerate for the victory in this life, I bid you call to me. I will help you in that acceleration. Now we send golden shafts of fiery sunbeam to the hearts of all children of light in the world. Hold this thought form as you sh see yellow shafts of light piercing the heart, the mind, the soul, reorienting those who are disoriented. Send these shafts of light through the decrees on the yellow ray, send them to the children, seal their hearts, send forth your electronic presence to heal them, to comfort them, to bring them to the place of dominion over self and movement toward leadership at many levels of civilization. Hope springs eternal for the coming year. It springs most lively in the hearts of chilas who know how to invoke that golden flame of illumination. When you move with the yellow fire, you move with the mind of God. You can know all things. All things are knowable unto you. This is the beginning of the victory. 
This is the beginning of empowerment on the second ray. This is the beginning of knowing Vevasvata Manu. Helios and Vesta, send thy beams upon these souls who adore thee and adore the mind of God. Help them to transform the world. Let them be beacon lights in the next three years. Let it be so, for I, Vevasvata Manu, will do all in my power to see that the darkness of the year is turned into the golden yellow sun of Helios and Vesta. Good can come to pass as you embody it. Evil will die on the vine when you give it no power. So be it, beloved. I shall yet return this day. I seal this portion of my dictation in this hour, for my angels will be working with your four lower bodies, and then we shall continue our discussion. In the joy of the heart of my son, Jesus Christ, I am Vevasvata Manu.
Let us continue, beloved. Now understand how hierarchy has determined to match what you have laid before us. You have written magnanimous letters to the lords of karma, and you have caused many who thought perhaps nothing could be done that much indeed can be done. Therefore, beloved, take the teachings that you have just heard, apply them, and realize that you have the energy of God to turn civilization around. This may seem preposterous, beloved, but indeed it is not. Do not think, then, that you do not count, for indeed you do count. And that action that you take and that concentration within your inner being, even within your four lower bodies, that you will find to be your greatest friend, that focus of concentration whereby there is a Tai Chi in every chakra, and the chakras spin, and the equilibrium is there, and the heart chakra is expanding. Let this light then pierce the veil of ignorance, of night, of despair. Let this veil be a part of that which shall be lifted, whereby you may enter new dimensions, even dimensions that will take you now up the ladder of the etheric octave. Whenever the messenger makes calls for a member of this activity, near or far, who has passed on, the messenger is concerned about what level that individual attained to. Was it the second level of the etheric octave? Was it the first or the fourth or the fifth? By the levels where people reside on earth and when they make their transition, we determine what is their level of spiritual growth? What have they achieved in this lifetime or other lifetimes where they have been directly tutored by a member of the Great White Brotherhood? Some individuals, beloved, have a very poor report card. It seems that they are drenched in the astral plane and have been for some decades or even centuries. Such a one recently passed on from a terminal illness and was, in a sense, incensed that nothing more had been done for him when, indeed, his karma had caused the entire situation, and it was not the responsibility of anyone but himself to work his way through that path, to take advantage of the violet flame that he knew about, and to come into a higher understanding of God. Often Western civilization has taught its pupils that they need not atone for sin, that they may simply do anything and not having any accountability. When that mentality is around, beloved, there is very little that you can do about it unless you have a great love and a great fervor in your heart to help one along the pathway. Christianity has developed in many a resentment a resentment that they have any responsibility whatsoever. Without responsibility, children are taught to carry knives, to murder one another. Small children getting smaller are those who are also using weapons against one another to their ultimate death. What is the reason, beloved? Non-accountability, non-accountability. Let everyone be accountable for his thoughts, words, and deeds. So you see, some leave this world in rejoicing, for they have loved the path and loved the masters and loved the messengers, and they have gone on and on up the spiral staircase into levels, higher levels of the etheric octave. Others who have not had this teaching then go by the wayside and wonder when God who owes them a living will come down to their level and pick them up and somehow create a miracle and draw them into a space 
where they have not even earned to be. We are counting on the book, on Jesus Christ and his true teachings, karma, reincarnation. We are counting on this book to bring those of the West to their senses and to that age of responsibility, also to the awareness that life moves on, that there is karma, positive and negative, that you can earn good karma, balance negative karma, and God sends you forth to be born again so that you might realize in totality what you can do and who you can be when you are willing to bend the knee in humility and abide by God's laws and not the laws of churches, prelates, and those who know nothing of the true path of God's victory. As I am a Manu, and as I am called Vevasvata, I speak to you then, for we are progenitors of our root race, and we have representatives of that root race from the fourth to the present. Therefore, among you who are sitting here this night, I find any number of you who have been with me long, long ago and who will be with me again. I greet you, though you may not have a clear memory of me, yet I do greet you, beloved, for I have known you a very long time. I am grateful that so many souls of the various root races, the fourth and fifth especially, are coming to the understanding of the violet flame, how they can balance karma, and how they can make progress much more quickly on the path of their ascension. Thus, the teachings of St. Germain that have been multiplied and promulgated by these messengers, by the Ballards and by others, this momentum circling the earth is creating a violet flame momentum that you can enhance. Direct from your hearts, beloved, transmutation of the seven seas. Direct those penetrating rays of violet flame for the transmutation of all life that lives in the sea. See then the level of smog and go after those who are the sylphs and assist them by the purification of world energies, pollutions, again by the violet flame. Call to Arcturus and Victoria, Zadkil and Holy Amethyst, Portia, Goddess of Justice, beloved Saint Germain, Omri Tas, and all those of the violet planet. Call upon them again and again and again for world purification, for only then shall mankind's brains be cleared and even then they must be willing to give up their smoking, their drugs, their pot, and all manner of substances that are killing them even while they are almost the living dead. Precious ones, when the violet flame becomes that point of saturation in every heart, you will see a purple heart in every human body who pays allegiance to the living flame of God. Think of this, beloved. Think of what people can be and what they can become when they know what is there for them to take, to multiply, and to do with. Now then, beloved, speaking of the end of this age and entering new ages, it is well indeed that the messenger has commented upon the situation of that specific rod being moved to another planet or another system. And I have seen that deep within your beings you have comprehended this teaching, and it is well. To summarize, I say to all of you that you must see that there are times and seasons of vast opportunity when the doors and windows of heaven are open for you to make your ascension. And then when such a rod is withdrawn and there is an inertia in the earth, then we are in a period Almost of the abyss, we are in that period when there is inertia and no motion. Thus, let all strive for that victory, for the glories of heaven cannot even be compared to the paltry conditions of the greatest castles, mansions, and structures that have ever been built on this planet, save in the golden ages of Atlantis and Lemuria. 
Now then we come to that moment when we of the ascended hosts are very desirous to see you have your victory, but not until you have that great choice of entering in and challenging world darkness. So then, beloved, it is the responsibility of all who know the law of God, all who know of the violet flame, all who know of the seven archangels and the sword of Archangel Michael, all the tools that you have been given and the fiery use of mantra. It is incumbent upon you to spread that teaching, that miraculous power to others all over the world, judging not their competence to receive it, but sending such an intensity of heart flow to them that that heart flow will enable them to understand just what is the Atman that is within the temple and did their hearts not burn. So there is that burning of the heart when we are in the presence of an avatar. Yes, beloved, an avatar. When you feel that burning in your world, then seek to increase it, accelerate it, and purify those four lower bodies. Let us reach out then to the souls who have done their penance, who have paid far beyond the 51% of karma required in this age to make your ascension. Let us consider that these souls must move into the ascension currents, must be drawn up in the draft, of higher octaves and taken to those levels where they may see from the universities of the spirit in the etheric octave what they must learn. You must know this, beloved. Make your calls fervently to me and to Lord Maitreya then, that you might be taken to those retreats whereby you will understand things that you must complete, things that you must fulfill, ere you can have a truly glorious ascension knowing that you have helped humanity in a tremendous way. Peace, beloved. Peace in the heart. Peace in the mind. Peace in the soul. Do you not know, beloved ones, that you who give so much to Saint Germain, so much to the Ascended Masters, that they do not care for you in a very special and personal and intimate way? Know, beloved, that those who have served for centuries the cause of the Brotherhood always receive their reward and receive it when it is most needed. You are experiencing changes in your cycles. They are for the strengthening. They are for the acceleration for you too are called to take your ascension in this life. Patterns you must fulfill, assignments also, a geometry of being, and a balance within the four lower bodies that tells you that soon the Christ will knock at your door and soon you will answer and that living Christ Jesus will enter and in sacred ceremony create the bonding of your soul to Jesus Christ. That bonding, as we have also called it, is a part of the marriage feast. It is the wedding garment Know then, beloved, that as you have served long and well, now is the time of the reaping. Reap in love and not in bitterness, not in fear. Reap in joy that your Savior draweth nigh. Reap in joy before the heart of Lord Maitreya. Recognize that all things are for your learning, for your strengthening, for discovering that you have a capacity far beyond that which you are using. Thus, I am grateful you have chosen to go back to schools of higher learning so that you might pierce the densities of this world and rise to new dimensions of that interior design 
of the interior castle of Teresa of Avila. Remember the interior castle. Remember that your Lord is there. Never resent hardship, but let it teach you. Be willing to go through the refiner's fire and to come out on the other side of that fire, purged, raised up, ready to meet your God and ready to receive his call, even if he sends you back to the streets of the large cities of the world, to institutions, to colleges, universities, places of learning. Yet in that inner life, which all of the adepts have walked, you have that interior knowing of who you are and who you have been and where you have come from. So beloved, in sealing my service to you this day, which has given to me great joy, I speak to you of that inner light, that inner intensity, that inner acceleration. Do not for one moment think that you are a lesser individual or not worthy or incapable or the time has passed for you to learn something new. Know, beloved, that you have compartments upon compartments of being in your own etheric body. When you send violet flame to that first quadrant, the etheric body, you are cleaning house. And when your house is in order, you will see how that entire quadrant is filled with a violet flame. It will feel as though you are living in some place that is not of this world, yet it is your own interior castle that you have built. So, sweet ones, I wish, if I could wish, and I seldom wish, but I would say to you, there are so many who have come to this community expecting to be received with silver platter, with obeisance, with all being taken care of, whether the life cycles, the medical needs, the food, the housing, the this, the that, until finally it is the messenger who waits upon the chilas rather than the reverse. Do you know, beloved, when those individuals leave from this arena where they have been sometimes for very long years, they are bitter and embittered and they are seized by their own demons and entities or others that come upon them or by the dweller of the planet. And so, beloved, they have missed the point. They have missed the point of the touching of the hem of Christ's garment, of receiving his body and his blood, of being the meek and the merciful here in the earth and allowing God to crown you when you deserve that crown of everlasting life. It is surely a pity and a pity's sake, beloved, to see these ones. And what is the whole story? Not enough has been done for them. They were cheated. They were not dealt with properly. They should have had this. They should have had that. Is there not a great law, greater than all laws, that one universal principle, that principle of karma and reincarnation? I tell you how exact is karma, how exact it is. Be glad when a portion of your karma comes tumbling down, for in that you know that God has loved you that you have made your peace with one whom you have wronged, even if you do not see that one directly face to face. And you can move on liberated because you have paid a price and paid a debt. Oh, little children, oh, little children, oh, sons and daughters of God, I wish, if I could, bring you one and all to my heart, 
that you might know surcease from such bitterness. But you have free will, and I, Vevasvata Manu, bow to that will within you, bow to your heart flame, bow to whatever it is that you are holding on to that is holding you back. So, in the flame of the Holy Spirit, Go about healing those of bitterness. Perhaps you may save a soul. For once a soul becomes bitter and embittered, most of the time they do not and cannot and will not undo that bitterness. So, precious hearts, what becomes next is they join others who are embittered. They go on the left-handed path, and in successions of incarnations, they ultimately lose the joy of the living Christ. Some among these, beloved, are among those who have passed from the screen of life, for their opportunity is run out. So you see, God is the giver of free will, and you are free to exercise it, and no one shall impair you of that exercise. Therefore, choose God and live forevermore in his grace, in his love, in his mercy, and in his justice. I am forever your Vevasvata Manu.